हरे कृष्णा एवरी वन वेलकम टू सेल्स फॉर हेल्पिंग हैंड चैनल माई नेम ऑल प्रजापति एंड टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू शेयर विद यू रिसेंटली वन ऑफ माई स्टूडेंट फेस द इंटरव्यू इन डिलोइट एंड सो दैट एक्सपीरियंस आई एम गोइंग टू शेयर वट काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन दे आस्क हिम सो द क्वेश्चन आर कम्बाइंड फर्स्ट एंड सेकेंड राउंड बोथ आर टेक्निकल राउंड राइट सो लेट मी शेयर माई स्क्रीन एंड हैव अ डिस्कशन रिगार्डिंग टू दोज क्वेश्चन ओके so hope you can see my screen okay perfect let me go through it one by one okay so we have a couple of question here and we'll see it so it is deloitte latest interview question and answer no other only by salesforce helping hand <clears throat> okay so guys first question they ask is create a dynamic method that will sql queries for different object and field so that means you need to write one uh, specific uh, or generic method so that can be used whenever we are querying for any object right so uh answer of this question is you can more uh, research on this but general answer is you can just provide public static list because we need to provide the list of records right and a string object name and string where clause we are receiving as a input parameter and then we are querying here as a string and then we are querying this string and then we are uh, returning this particular list whatever we are getting in this particular object right because that definitely we are uh, having the list there from where wherever we are calling this particular of method right so that is the answer of this question now let's move to the next slide and okay so basically upload a multiple file related to one record programmatically right so basically in salesforce we have attachment and we click on that and then we can update the or upload the file so how you can do it programmatically so simply you just needs to uh, take the list of versions uh, declare it and then simply have we have a, a object base 64 data and then you know this file list we have the contain this whole data right and then we provide the uh, contain version title attachment path on client pdf right and version data like that whatever the version you want to keep okay so we have want to keep in 64 record so that's what and then insert the version of record so in that way we can upload the multiple file related to one record programmatically now let's move to the next scenario insert parent and related child record in test class this is quite simple but we have to be very careful uh, because always we have to insert first parent and then child right so that's the thing they want to check here they don't want to give you this simple question sometime what we'll do is okay insert uh, uh, contact person then account that would be not the scenario just insert the account record first and then contact and then you can ask further we can add the more fields whatever are required at the time of testing right now the next scenario is first call api to get access token and then the another call using that api that token so basically what they want is they want that there should be two api call first api call through the first api call we are getting the access token from that particular third party application and then using that token we are hitting again that endpoint url and we are getting the uh, access for for that particular system and then we are you know uh, doing whatever is uh, our action here so let's say we have public first nq implement queuable class and uh, public static go to queuable context first of all integration helper so this is our helper class which is helping us to get the access token and second what we are doing is using this token we are again in queuing our job right so which will uh, do one more api here okay so this is the answer of this question guys let me move to the next slide 
so <clears throat> is it related to something lwc or you can say the ui so scenario is we need to show a spinner while fetching the data from apex right so this loading what you need to do is let's say there is a, this loading is equals to true and then get record and then we can use this particular this data is equal to result and finally we have to make it false because after getting the data that definitely it should be false otherwise that uh, what i can say is spin will be uh, you know on the appearing on the screen regularly okay let's move to the next slide for next question so scenario is uh, we need to call an external api security without storing credential how you can do this so what we have to do is we have to use here name credential okay so this you can see we have a name credential in salesforce and that in that way we can pass this you know api view and data like this okay so this is the question and this is the uh, general answer you can definitely uh, having more understanding on this and you can you know try to what i can say uh, more on this okay now the next scenario is so only field visible to user in lwc so what you have to do is there is a schema describe object facilities account as object type dot get describe and then we'll uh, found the schema field member set if you get the values if that value is described is accessible then so otherwise not so this is the answer of this question okay now let's move to a business require that every parent record have a child record a developer write an apex method with an two dml statement to insert a parent record and a child record now a validation rule uh, block a child record from being created the method user try catch block to handle the dml exception what should a developer do to ensure the parent always has the child record simply set a database save point roll back a uh, roll back sorry if there are error right so let's say uh, there is a one apex class and we have saved save a point right so whenever it's fine like this is the error occur at this point so the whole transaction should be roll back at this moment right so this is the answer of this question so here is one question for you guys so they they actually given one this piece of code list account and name and, and limit one this and for account they are uh, iterating the each and every account and second they are querying itself inside the for loop and now they are asking common which is the better technique so the answer i'll definitely provide in the comment but now i just have this question for you so i want the answer from you okay don't forget the uh, comment for answer this question guys okay let's move to the next slide so you are integrating a salesforce with an external system that send a 1000 re plus record per request your apex re uh, rest api endpoint process and insert record how do you handle governor limit and parcel failure in the scenario again the answer has to provide by you if not definitely i'll give you in the description or in the comment okay you have a before trigger and after trigger on the same object okay let's say that that is an opportunity object both update a related and custom object forecast record the issue is <clears throat> the after trigger sometime override the before triggers update so answer of this question is salesforce never ever give the guarantee the execution order of trigger before versus after trigger execution sequence but not a multiple triggers use a single trigger per object that delegate a logic to handler class ensure your control the execution order if both before and after need to update the same related object store in uh, intermediate data in static variable and finalize in the after trigger context alternatively use a queueable from the trigger for asynchronous update ensuring final update happen after the commit only okay the next question is you have an lwc that render different input field based on the record type of an account the component becomes slow due to multiple uh, reactive property check how can you optimize the dynamic ui rendering here so the answer of this question is instead of multiple if and true condition in the template 
use computed getters and single dynamic render block okay so this is the logic uh, we can check here like get fields to display and inside this we have written this record type is equal to equal to partner then uh, partner fields otherwise customer fields okay in that way we can uh, have a this if and true uh, reduce here so this is the answer of this question if you have more detail of this you can definitely comment it out okay Okay, now on the next question is you are chaining three queuable job data fetch, processing, and notification. Sometimes the second job fail and the third is still execute, leading to inconsistent state. How can you prevent subsequent queuable from the running if a previous one is failed? So, answer of this question is don't chain blindly in finally or outside the try catch. Use a wrapper pattern or queuable controller that track job status in a custom object. And third, and which is very important, only in queue the next job if the previous one is successful, this true. Okay, so, so this is the way uh, you can uh, answer this question. Now the next question is, you must ensure an opportunity cannot be moved to close one if a related court is not approved. At least one related court line has a discount, uh, you can say greater than 20%. Would you use validation rule or Apex? If yes, then why? Validation rule cannot be actually easily check aggregate data from related list. Okay. Use an apex before update trigger and query related codes and code lines items and then use that logic to make sure this particular validation. A parent LWC host multiple child for different tabs or tab, sorry. You need to sync state selected records across all child component dynamically. How would you design an inter-component communication here? So avoid at the rate API chaining if more than two levels deep. Use lightning message service for sibling and non-direct components. Publish a message on a record selection. All subscriber react and update their state. And last but not the least, public this dot message can just select records. And this is a basically syntax how you can make it. Now the next question is you need to store configuration data like API URLs, discount limit, tax rate, the changes between environment. How do you decide whether to use custom metadata, custom setting or custom object? This is very common question actually. So based for based of the uh, requirement config moves between orgs via deployment. So we can decide like definitely custom metadata is easy. Whenever we talk about the API endpoints, case or no SQL needed, it is faster, right? Custom setting is like org or specific preference, example, default country per user, not deployable via metadata by default. Custom object definitely configured by user track with audit fields, subject to security preferred custom metadata or static configuration and custom object for dynamic. Okay, next question is when a batch updating 1000 opportunity linked to the same account and DML fail with unable to lock row. How will you answer of this question? Very simple. We have the four update keyword, right? So you can just use it to skip the lock to handle the concurrency. So let's say we have this uh, loop and inside loop we are querying select ID from account where and we are also using four update skip the lock condition. Okay. And group by a parent before update the use similar batch size. So this is one of the another thing we can do. Okay, so guys, thank you so much. So this is all about today. And if you really like this content, please don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel. And if you want to face a mock interview, just connect with me on LinkedIn. Thank you. Bye-bye.